Canada's only national racing series begins the annual Western Swing with two races here tonight at Saskatoon. Get ready, the True North Strong and Fast invades the prairies. The NASCAR PT Series has enjoyed great success in 2019. Four winners have visited Victory Lane at four distinct types of racetracks. Many drivers are in championship mode, while others are trying to make their own mark. The Western Swing is a make-or-break stretch for many seeking the almighty NASCAR crown. Veterans striving for more power and consistency, while the newcomers are looking for that moment that says, I belong. The True North, strong and fast, powers into the prairies as NASCAR brings the big show to Saskatoon. Hello and welcome to Wyant Group Raceway in Saskatoon. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits for us here today. And Adam, each time we come to this facility here in Saskatoon, it's definitely a racer's track. This is a racy and fast third mile oval, multiple grooves, so we see a lot of side-by-side -side racing. And over the years, this track has proven it's conducive to first-time winners. We only have to look back one year, 2018, where both Cole Powell and Donald Teach marked their first NASCAR Pinty Series wins right here in Saskatoon. And as we look at the points championship for 2019, it's very tight at the top. Andrew Ranger leads Kevin Lacroix by a scant two points, but the 18 of Alex Tagliani made up some ground with his win last time out in Toronto. Tagliani brings great momentum to this three-race Western swing, and if there's one thing history has shown us, this is a three-race stretch in the season that can make or break your championship run. So you've got those three drivers at the top, but then you've got a number of racers who know they have to perform in these next two nights of racing. Speaking of champions, the defending series champion, the 47 of LP Dunale in E3 Spark Plugs pole qualifying, went out on this brisk and windy afternoon, and he set fast time of 15.036. was good enough to capture the whole lap and definitely needed it here today. You know, he really does. But there was a number of other stories in practice and qualifying that make tonight even more fascinating. How about Luke Hocus from the Paw Manitoba, a part-time racer? This is his home track, even though he's many hours away. That is a former Jason Hathaway car, very competitive car. He looked fantastic in practice. One driver from out west who's joining us here today. We saw her earlier this season at Jucasa in the 43, Chantal Kalika. She struggled a little bit in qualifying, but she'll get her things together for race time. She showed a, a good pace here last year. She'll also be running the next event at Edmonton and the series finale in Jucasa once again. And maybe the most impressive of the Western Canadians, a surprise to many in qualifying, is with Todd Lewis right now, and that's Grand Prairie, Alberta's Jamie Krizik. Jamie Krizik getting set to make his 10th NASCAR Pinty Series start with a very good qualifying run. You'll roll off fourth if you got 125 more just like it. I sure hope so. Uh, it was a little bit of a surprise for the Crown Pile Ventures Camaro, and uh, we'll, we'll see. It, uh, it went really well, but uh, we've got some things to fight with some, some track issues with rain coming through from, uh, from this morning and then uh, being ready for the second race later on tonight. So uh, we'll try and make the most of it, and I just got to thank everyone that's invol involved with this. Uh, Crown Pile Ventures, Burmar, Rewind, Shade All, everybody back home, Grand Prairie. It, uh, it's really cool to be up here. I've never been this close to the front, so we'll see what happens. Good luck. Stay there tonight. Thank you. Great. That's Jamie Krizik. He'll roll off fourth. And when we come back to Wyatt Group Raceway, we'll get the green flag for race number one. Races number five and six in the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s presented by Bear Crop Science are brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by AGI, makers of Batco, Westfield, and West Steel. Pre-race festivities in full swing here in Saskatoon, and the wind and cloudy skies have rolled in here at Wyant Group Raceway. Well, the spotters are ready to rock for race one of a doubleheader here tonight. This will be Sun Peaks British Columbia, Jason White, 99th career start. They've been working on that car all day long. Let's go trackside with Stephen Fenner's command. Right. Stop. Straight away of Wyatt Group Race. 
Raceway in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. You can see some moisture still on the track, and that will be a story over the course of the evening. This track has a bad habit of some weepers uh, flowing through, especially in turn number one. But there you see Kevin Lacroix, who has always been very quick in qualifying, has never really had the finishes he needs here in Saskatoon. The Western swing has not always been kind to Kevin Lacroix, but we'll watch for that bumper to bumper 74 to be pretty stout as you can see menacing skies overhead here's the clean flow starting lineup on the pole is lp dumlin in the 47 alongside kevin lacroix in the 74 alex lebay in the 36 and there's jamie krizik in the 34. row number three has mark antoine cameron and jason hathaway making up that row anthony simone in the number one there's alex tagliani comes into this one third in points in row number four Rounding out the top 10, DJ Kennington in the 17 and Luke Hocus in the 10. 11th and 12th, Donald Teej in the 24 and Andrew Ranger in the 27. Looking back one more row to row number seven, Julia Landauer back behind the wheel of the number 28, Mark Dilley in the 64. Brett Taylor drives to the 46 and Jason White will start on the outside of row number eight. Row nine has Brandon White in the 04 and Chantel Kalika in the 43. And rounding out the field, our rookie TJ Renamato in the 02. Field working to get some temperature in these general tires. You can see them moving back and forth. Let's take a look at today's E3 Spark Lux race analysis. This is a sprint race, a double header. They'll both be the same. 125 laps the distance, no scheduled stops. And it was Donald Teej who took this win last season. Dave. And before we go to green, let's check in one more time with Todd. A couple cars that we're keeping an eye on from Pitt Road. The 36 of Alex LeBay. Alex has run here three times, has three podiums, including a win in 2017. Trouble, though, for the 43 of Chantel Kalika. The team discovered motor problems after qualifying. They're started. They hope to take the green. From there, they're really unsure. Be a couple cars we're going to watch here today. And you have to remember the 47 of LP Dumoulin starts on pole in the WeatherTech.ca Dodge. This is the place he captured his first ever oval track win in the NASCAR Pinty Series. It was a green-white checker finish. I remember it well. A little bit different today. He's the dominant car. He is the rabbit. And we're about to go green, Dave. The Dodge pace truck pulls down pit lane. It is LP Dumoulin and Kevin Lacroix leading them off of turn number four. The green flag waves and we're underway in Saskatoon. Side up a turn two, down the back straight away. They drag race Kevin Lacroix with a good run on the outside. But keep in mind, that's where the moisture is. He's got to be careful. Yeah, it seems to be just in one and two. That's where the weepers are affecting that outside lane. But Kevin Lacroix using that high line to power into the lead in the bumper to bumper number 74. Jason Hathaway to the inside of Mark Antoine Cameron. He'll slide up in front of the number 22. And up front, the battle for second. Alex LeBay in the 36 to the inside of LP Dumoulin 47. LeBay in that Hotel Le Concorde, number 36, needs a good run. He's been pretty disappointed with the way his finishes have worked out here in 2019 after making a return to the series, running a full season of Xfinity Series last year. forward from L.P. Dumoulin, now looking back from LeBay, and you can see LeBay is entering the corner a lot higher than L.P. Dumoulin, making a bit of a more rounded approach to the turn. They both seem fairly quick for the time being. Battle for 10th, Donald Teach, Julia Landauer, and the 18 of Alex Tagliani, all within arm's length of each other. As a matter of fact, the one love number 28 of Landauer sneaks underneath the Rona Happy Pen Chevy, the 18 of Alex Tagliani. And right behind them, looking to get a nose under tag is Brett Taylor in that wing in it, number 46. He's excited to be out here racing with the Ed Hackinson Racing Team. He's taken his equipment over to EHR, and that's who prepped that car for this week's races. And this marks the first oval race that he'll be associated with that team as we see his new teammate and mentor, Jason Hathaway, working on the back bumper of the Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Yeah, Kennington slid down in front of the three of Jason Hathaway in their battle for the fifth spot. Riding on board with the driver, the Kubota Chevy. And it's 
such a compromise between putting steering wheel into the car, getting it straight, and getting on the throttle without having to make any corrections. There you see Tagliani's caught up in the, that outside groove. Now in a battle for 13th with the Silverline Tools number one of Anthony Simone. You know, that Stackley team, all three of their cars, they've been struggling a little bit to find this setup on the oval tracks this year. They just haven't quite nailed it yet. Well, we talked about it in the opening. The 24 of Donald Teague won his very first NASCAR's Pinty Series race right here in Saskatoon last year. And you're right, we expected him to see that car at the top of the charts after qualifying. It wasn't quite there. In talking to Alex Tagliani and actually listening to some of his media appearances this week, they said they want to change back some of the things on the cars, but some of them were actually re-engineered in the race car. You just can't undo it. You've got to work with what they've got and figure out a way to make it happen. As we watch the battle for fourth, Jamie Krizik doing a nice job hanging in the top five. And it's tough, especially on a day like today when we've had weather blow through at times, limited amounts of practice. The track is pretty green. You're trying to learn and you're trying to set up at the same time. Really sets it behind the eight ball when you don't have a car that rolls off the trailer fast. And our practice sessions in the Pinty series are generally about an hour in length. It's not enough time to make drastic changes, go out and test, reevaluate. You sort of have to take swings at the setup. There's the battle, Mark Dilley in the Leland number 64, tucking onto the back bumper, the wing in at number 46, uh, Brett Taylor as we ride on board with Dilley. are up for Mark Dilley. A quick glance to the left as he drives into the corner. The Troop West is always special for Dilly because of that logo right there on the dash. Leland Industries brings a ton of people to this race. Back up towards the front of the field. There is your race leader from St. Estache, Quebec, the number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Alex LeBay in the Hotel Le Concorde, number 36, running in second. Then it's the WeatherTech.ca Number 47 of L.P. Dumoulin, your defending series champion, tucked into third very comfortably. Top three appear to be opening up a little bit of a gap now. Yeah, they've gapped the field just a little bit. It's early in this race, but again, you don't want to let anyone get too far out. With this field, I can see it going a long way without needing a yellow. There's T.J. Rina Motto in that Hauler Magazine 024 going a lap down. I can't say enough this season about how much respect Rina Motto has shown these cars and his competitors while he learns his craft. Yeah, and he did it right there. You saw the leaders go by. He was tucked down right on the yellow line. Wheels almost on the curbing, but held his line. Let the leaders go by and didn't mix into that battle for top spot. This still this dice for fourth, though, between Krizik and the 17 of DJ Kennington. And look at the Mopar Dodge, Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger in the 26. Seven is right there as well. Andrew Ranger started deep in this field. He was outside of the top 10 when the green flag dropped, so he has been on a march to the front. Now, you know what's interesting, too? He was fast in practice, but he just didn't get that qualifying lap. The weather seemed to change. A lot of drivers who are at the top of the charts for practice weren't necessarily there in qualifying. Something about watching Andrew Rangers on board. I don't know of any driver who looks more at home. Just every motion so casual, so relaxed. And he's such a fierce competitor. But to look so calm doing it. Well, if you looked at his bumpers at the end of the race, you would know that he is anything but calm at times. He knows when it's time to go and when it's time to make those moves. But in a long green flag run like this, Andrew Ranger will sit and comfortably ride. Here's a few drivers who have to get up on the wheel. Jason White in the 21, Luke Hocus in the 10. We had a look at Julia Landauer. They've got to get going. They're in the 14th spot, well outside the top 10. The race leader, Kevin Lacroix, is coming. Still under green at Wyatt Group Raceway in Saskatoon. Lacroix is your leader. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. We're in Saskatoon for race number five on the 2019 calendar. Jason Hathaway now on the tail of Jamie Krizik as they battle for the sixth spot. Krizik was overtaken by DJ Kennington and Andrew Ranger. Now falling back into the grasp of Jason Hathaway, a savvy veteran oval track racer. 
He doesn't look rusty, but a year out of the seat, a year away from communicating with his crew chief, Craig Masters, I think that's what they're making up for right now, Dave. And all of that stuff, all of that gelling means a lot when you get to the racetrack. You have to be on the same page right from the get-go. And that's exactly, as you mentioned, what Jason Hathaway and team have been doing. But you see right behind that panel, the wicket at number 46 of Brett Taylor. Jason Hathaway's new teammate is showing some speed here in Saskatoon. Showing a lot of speed as we look at this battle for 12 between Mark Dilley in the 64, Anthony Simone in the number one. Down through one and two, Dilly just doesn't look like he can maintain grip at the bottom of the racetrack. So he's running a bit of an unorthodox groove up on the high side. Now you can see it sliding up in the middle of the turn. That car showing what appears to be a tight condition. The Leland number 64 hoping for a caution. The flames out from underneath. That's the exhaust on the 64 puffing a little bit. It appears anyway. Well, when you let off the throttle for that length of time, your momentum's still going. A little bit of raw fuel gets dumped into the exhaust, and it explodes, Dave. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. But you see DJ Kennington not able to get too far ahead of that battle. And now the leaders on the back of the 28 of Julia Landauer, but the gap at the front has shrunk. LP Dublin right up behind Kevin Lacroix in that 74. You have two choices when you're running in second. You follow the leader, where they choose to approach lap traffic, or you try to make your own hole. There you see Landauer up in the outside groove. She'll let the leaders go by a big wiggle as she gets caught in that moisture on the entrance to turn number one. Gathers it back up. Big save by the driver of the 28. And you used the term earlier in this race, weepers. So what that is, there's been so much rain, so much water at this racetrack, there is actually water seeping up, weeping up through cracks in the track. The worst of which is about three lanes up going into turn one. So that's why nobody's really ventured way up to the outside because there is water. They just went by it. You do not want to get these general tire slicks up into the water. Dave. No, it doesn't affect the normal racing groove. And even two drivers can go side by side through to turn number one. Any more than that, you're into dangerous territory. And you can see that was a great shot there. You can really see a significant amount of moisture. You see a little bit deeper in the pack, the 46 and the 24. Brett Taylor in eighth and Donald Teach in the ninth position, but they've all caught the 17 once again of DJ Kennington as Jamie Krizik seems to have gathered things back up in the 34. And the driver from Grand Prairie, Alberta, is now back in the hunt. It's always fun to watch racers who don't race with us regularly and how they mix it up with the leaders. It's a difficult series. These are some of the best drivers in all of Canada. They travel coast to coast across Canada, and to just do a one-off race is pretty tough. And Jamie Krizik is showing a lot of respect. He didn't hit DJ Kennington. He's looking for an opportunity to get in there and race. DJ Kennington showing Jamie Krizik a lot of respect. Krizik didn't quite have the bottom groove going into turn one there, but Kennington left that lane open because you're better to do that than not be sure, make contact, and ruin your night. Now, there is a lot of space here at a wide group race wave. In fact, you do have a problem. There's a lot of space to spin and not hit the wall, but you don't want to test it. No, for sure. And just the loss of track position tonight is we've got yellow on the racetrack. We've got a car around. Kevin Lacroix was about to put a lap on Hocus as Donald Teach almost clipped the backstretch wall. Comes to rest on the pit entrance on the inside of turn three. Now that started all the way on turn exit of turn number two. Donald Teach was trying to pinch the car down low. We'll get another chance to look at it. Watch the white car on the inside of the back of the pack. He got into, he and Brett Taylor made a little bit of contact. You can see Taylor's car wiggle. Teach spun it to the infield. Todd is on pit road. 22 taking advantage of this yellow for a handling adjustment on the right rear. Three, four, five, six rounds in and an air pressure adjustment. Now, could Brian McDonald actually count as he was swinging his arm around? That was a major swing at the handling of that 22 car. Yeah, trying to make the Pi-A GM 
Chevy Camaro work a little bit better. You see the Silver Line Tools, number one of Anthony Simone, also taking the opportunity to make an adjustment during this caution period. We ride on board your race leader. He's been at the front but since the drop of the green here in Saskatoon. Saskatoon for race number five of the 13th race NASCAR Pinty Series. Kevin Lacroix leads the Velocity Prairie Thunder 125 as he gets set to take the restart for the first time here on lap 58. An even start down into turn one. They ran a lot of laps under green at the start of that race. Impressive driving by this group. Do you think much of that has to do with them being reminded, look, we have another race tonight. Don't use it all up. And you know what's funny? That's a big conversation that we were having in the pits earlier. I was talking to a number of the drivers just asking, do you go hard in the first one and save it for the second one? Or do you just sort of moderate your aggression? And a lot of the drivers say, if the hole's there, we're going to go for it. But we do have to save our equipment. And it's not just the other race tonight, Dave. This Western Swing, most of these teams can't go back to Ontario after this before we go out to Edmonton. So what you've got is mostly what you've got for three races. Well, what they've got now is a single file train at the front of the field. Jason White, the odd man out in the 21, battling with Mark Dilley for that ninth spot. And he is up in no man's land coming off of turn four. You know, it doesn't surprise me to see the number 21 up there as Jason White not afraid to try and make a move. The 17 of DJ Kennington tucked underneath there as he made a late pit stop for adjustments. Yeah, Kennington obviously wasn't thrilled with how his car was working, went in and had some adjustments made. He looks fairly racy. Whoa, Jason White into the moisture. He'll go around in turn two as Anthony Simone going around in turn one at the same time. Hats off to Jason White as he lights up those general tires. Caution flag obviously flies for the spin in turn one and two, but we talked about that moisture, and that's exactly what Jason White got into. But how about the smoke show to keep it off the wall? So Jason White hit the moisture in one. Well, let's watch this. Let's ride on board. There is no doubt Jason White is the best spinner in the history <laughs> of the NASCAR Pink T Series. So Anthony Simone did the same thing. By contrast, Simone locked him down. Locked up the tires, let the car come around. White lit him up. Both of them worked. Neither one made contact with the wall, but several drivers taking the opportunity to head down pit lane, including Julia Landauer. And Todd is standing by with a couple of other drivers finding their pit stall. Todd? After the smoke show, the 21 is along pit road for a handling adjustment from crew chief Larry Jackson. The one of Anthony Simone is also here, and the 28 of Julia Landauer along pit road again. They're having problems with something at the front end of that car. As the expression goes, Dave, cautions breed cautions. That's what we saw there. Hopefully we can get to the end of this one clean. We'll get the field realigned. Lacroix still out in front here at Saskatoon. Welcome back to Saskatoon. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Big shout out to all the members of the Saskatoon stock car community that make this beautiful one-third of a mile racetrack run week after week. And a special hello to our race director, Jimmy Wilson, tonight calling the shots along with series director Sherry Putnam. And a big thanks to the TSN crew who made the trip west. Hello to Steve Ryan, who is directing tonight's show. Yeah, Steve doing a wonderful job all weekend long as we look for the green flag once again. There'll be 69 laps in the books as the leaders cross the line. Big launch by Kevin Laquan, LP Dumoulin, Savvy gets himself directly to the bottom of the racetrack. Have a look there. Battle for third is the 27 of Andrew Ranger in his comfort spot. Captain Highliner in the Mopar Dodge up on the outside. He, he got, got a wiggle, didn't he? So did Brett Taylor. Wow, Taylor lost a bunch of spots getting into the wet. Nice shot for him to save that race car. Still trying to work that outside line, though. The battle now with DJ Kennington in the Castrol at Dot, but we have a battle at the front heating up as the 47 took a look underneath the 74. All these laps, 71 laps, basically. Kevin Lacroix has controlled this race. LP Dumoulin starting to apply the pressure, and I like the way his car is firing off the corner. He is really able to come off the turn low. Let's ride on board with Jason Hathaway. Hathaway, the only non-Quebecer in the top five right now. We know it because if you ever heard him try to speak French, it's horrible. <laughs> but, he, but he looks good doing it. <laughs> he 
sure does. He tries. He's got a style of his own to Jason Hathaway. He's probably got some uh, French thoughts in his mind right now as he looks in the mirror and sees Andrew Ranger in that Mopar 27 closing the gap. And you can see Hathaway struggling to keep that car on the bottom. He's opening up that bottom groove and the 27 ready to pounce. But at the front, these two are glued together, nose to tail. Your race leader, Kevin Lacroix, LP Dumoulin, as we ride on board the drive of the 47. used while well, he was getting a good run there. Just gives a tap to Kevin Lacroix. Hey, how do you do? I'm right behind you. And those things, he knows he's not going to move Lacroix up out of the groove, but he also knows Kevin Lacroix will have that in mind for a number of laps. While you're watching this, have a look just a little bit higher on the horizon. You see the sky, it is starting to get a little bit darker. As we mentioned, we had some weather move in earlier today, and it looks like more is coming. Andrew Ranger looking to the inside of Jason Hathaway. He'll drive it deep down into turn number three. Side by side off a of four Ranger with a good run on the inside. Hathaway was able to keep his momentum up high. You can see Hathaway pinch the driver of the 27 Ranger down low. He avoided the weeper in turn number one. And that's a veteran move. Hathaway loves racing here. And he's doing a very good job. It might be hard for someone to understand, but Jason Hathaway has as much finesse and style on an oval track as drivers like Andrew Ranger and Alex Tagliani and Kevin Lacroix have on a road course. There are a lot of little things the driver can do to help himself out, and Jason Hathaway knows all of them. And that's the reason why the 46 of Brent Taylor and the winging it Dodge wants to link up with a driver like Jason Hathaway to sort of bank on that expertise and try and build his own resume. The love taps are getting a little bit more solid, and you can see the wear just above the word Dodge on Dumoulin's bumper, which is perfect for him. Drive into the corner, your bumper goes just below the car in front of you. As you get on the throttle, give a little bump, it actually lifts the car in front of you, lifts the suspension, so you're not taking the rear tires right off the ground, but you make them a little bit lighter and give up some of their grip. Coming into lap traffic, though, the 0-2 of TJ Renamato is just ahead. Now the door opens on the inside. Here comes Dumoulin. He paces it down to the yellow line in 1-2. and two. The 74 way up high almost touches the wall as the WeatherTech.ca 47 of Dumoulin goes through to top spot. And TJ Renamato, who all night has been staying on the bottom of the racetrack to let the leaders go by, Whoever is spotting for him, wise, he said, stay on the outside. Those leaders are coming. So L.P. Dumoulin, Kevin Lacroix, Alex LeBay, they all get by the 0-2 on the bottom. Now, you know what's interesting is we ride on by a big wiggle from the driver of the 47, Dumoulin, but it was we ride on board with Kevin Lacroix, both he and Andrew Ranger. Remember, they come into this one separated by two points. They both have an average finish of 2.2 so far this year. They both have a worst finish of fourth place. Amazing. Ranger has the lead based on laps led. Amazing race car drivers. And now Kevin Lacroix wants nothing more than to return the favor of Dumoulin. And it's not dirty. It's oval racing. Get in there with your front bumper and try to massage that 47 and get him off his line and get him thinking about what's happening behind him.
that he is picking up as Andrew Ranger a little bump on the back bumper in the 36 of LeVay. And here goes Ranger to the inside. Did you see how sideways Ranger was coming off the turn? Still with his foot in the throttle enough to get by Alex LeVay. Impressive bit of driving by Andrew Ranger. Can he close in on Kevin Lacroix and the race leader, L.P. Dumoulin? So put the Mopar Dodge hopping to third spot. The Ford Fusion of Alex LeVay drops back one more as we look back to a dice for seventh position. Jamie Krizik still hanging on inside the top ten, having a great run. I, I believe, I can't speak for him, but I've got to think he'd be happy with this run. He's battling with some quality drivers. Got DJ Kennington two spots behind him and Brett Taylor. Well, right beside him now. Now, Taylor, I mean, there's another driver who's having a very, very good run here at Lion Group Raceway in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Dives underneath the Zago side by side. Krizik will back out just a little bit early, but you can't really do it too much because that door is now open. You have to battle for that inside group because here comes DJ Kennington. You're absolutely right. And Jamie Krizik, wow, I can't believe the run he's getting off the corner. I thought he was beat going into the turn. I, I don't think he can fight back on the outside with a driver like Kennington down there. So Jamie Krizik falls back to ninth. Everybody now single file in that battle as they sort their way through. LP Dumoulin still tops here at Wine Group Raceway. One driver has been putting on a serious late race push as the driver, the 18, Alex Tagliani. He's now up to fifth position as he muscles his way past the number three Kubota Chevy of Jason Hathaway. Tagliani really hasn't been heard from too much in this race with the Ronia EpiPen number 18. If you want your car to run well, this is the time to do it late in a run, working his way towards the front. But I'll tell you, the drivers ahead of him are pretty darn fast. Well, Tagliani has done that a couple of times so far in 2019. You remember at Autodrome Chaudière, he was nowhere to be seen, and all of a sudden, at the end of the race, he's sitting in fifth. And again, that's what you want to shine at the end of the race. And we've had a lot of drivers over the history of the series who are very good at going fast and not as good at closing the deal as we watch this battle for the eighth spot. Donald Teach, DJ Kennington in the 17, Jamie Krizik in the 34. 24 and 17, two drivers who decided to make a pit stop during the first caution period to make some changes. And now look at your race leader, deep in lap traffic, the 47 of LP Dumoulin, and now the 74 of Kevin Lacroix on the bumper to bumper total. Dodge he is right there and looking for the opening. To the inside they went of the first two lap cars. Now Dumoulin has a decision. Rina Motto goes to the bottom. He'll go to the outside, but there's more that he is going to have to weave through. You see the nose of the third place driver too. Andrew Ranger has caught this lead group in Rain, this lap traffic. Raindrops up the windshield of Kevin Lacroix. You can see them in the corner and they're getting bigger. They are indeed as this rain starts to fall heavier on this third of a mile Wyatt Group Raceway. L.P. Dumoulin, he's got the same raindrops on his windshield and all sorts of traffic and obviously the most to lose of anyone out there. So he's hoping for a yellow as quick as it can come. The tires have some heat in them, so that is the saving grace. But of course, these general tires, as you see, Andrew Ranger doing a lot of steering, trying to hang on to the car underneath him. Andrew Ranger has a history of ice racing, so if anyone can embrace this type of battle, it's Ranger in that 27. Speed starting to slow down at the front of the field as you see a pair of CBRT teammates battling side by side. LeBay in the 36. In that dice as well as Jason White in his 99th start up on the outside. Still under green, and you can see the wet windshield from the 21 of white. And Anthony Simone just ahead of him, getting awfully loose up on the outside. We've got one around. Alex Tagliani from the fifth position spins around in one and two. 12 laps, to 11 laps to go as the leaders cross the line. The caution flag comes out. The track is damp. And Tagliani goes around. Your race leader is the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin. We'll take another look at what happened to the 18. He's at the top of the screen, just going into one now on the outside. I don't know if he caught something. 
some water. He said, but he get off the groove. There's no heat from the race car, so it's even wetter up out of the groove. And Jimmy Wilson, the race director, bringing these cars down pit lane. Yeah, you can see the cloud coming in across the prairies. That's the beautiful thing about racing here at Saskatoon. You can see the weather coming. NASCAR will try to get the remaining handful of laps completed here. We'll take a quick break on TSA. Welcome back to Saskatoon. Our eyes no longer on the track, but on the sky. As some serious weather has moved over the speedway, NASCAR has declared that lightning is within range, so they're asking all fans, officials, competitors, all get safety. Teams are covering up their equipment right now, Dave. It's not so much the rain it's, that's the issue, it's the lightning, and it puts into place a completely different protocol that people have to go and seek shelter, seek safety, and it's a 30-minute window that they're supposed to wait until things resume. Emergency vehicles trying to keep some temperature in this track. Todd, standing by with your race leader. Well, this is an unusual situation, so close to a victory, but looks like we're going to have to wait for a little while. I don't know whether going to be the decision because we have a second race to do tonight, so I don't mind. The car was good, and uh, weather tech by Mark car was great. Thanks for my crew. Thanks for everybody out here, the fans, and uh, hopefully you're going to stay over for the next of the, for the rest of the night because... Uh, I think it's gonna drop pretty good. But yeah, it was fun and uh, we had a great car. Driver who was sitting in second spot is also out there. There's Kevin Lacroix, the bumper to bumper crew, as they clean up their area waiting for this rain here at the Wyatt Group Raceway in Saskatoon. Welcome back to the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s, and NASCAR has declared that L.P. Dumoulin has won the first race of the evening here in Saskatoon. He took part in the E3 Spark Plug Winter Circle festivities. And I think it was the only choice to make because you can see in the background, the skies are clearing. We have another 125 lap race yet to run, and the teams need some time to prepare those race cars from the last one to this one. So a good call. Dumoulin wins Lacroix second. Ranger with a great run to advance to third. Career best for Brett Taylor in sixth. And you hear we see the latter half of the top 19. Tagliani all the way back to 11th because of that spin. And DJ Cannington way down in the 16th spot in that Castro Edge number 17. And now we move on to race number two of the evening. NASCAR track officials and the good folks at Dirty Devil Hydrovac Systems done a fine job of getting the track prepared for race number two of the evening. The starting lineup for this second race determined by the fastest lap of the first race. No big surprise, Andrew Ranger, who was lightning quick in the first one, will start on the ball. L.P. Dumoulin will start on the outside of row number one. And did you hear the story about the Dirty Devil? I, I actually did, but it's a fascinating story. Apparently, a fan in the stands, and there was so much standing water here in this infield, offered to bring his trucks, these big sucker trucks, and basically unloaded swimming pool after swimming pool of water in short order. It was amazing. Four of those trucks all working at the same time. Race car people are good people. And a lot of the fans here in Saskatoon have stuck around to watch this second race. A big tip of the hat to those fans, Dave. And the driver of the 21, Jason White, has finally made it to his 100th career start. His race to 100 has been an eventful one. The Sun Peaks British Columbia native has traveled an estimated 2.5 million kilometers over the past 12 years. He has a top 15 average finish. A couple of top five finishes, of course, seen his stash and his home track in Vernon, British Columbia. And of course, Jason White, the first to get onto social media and use it, embrace it. He was a Twitter hero for a long time, and that's why the hashtag Race to 100 is so popular this year. Probably the greatest ambassador for our brand of racing that's ever been in the series. And, and I say that without much hesitation. Green flag is up for the second of two 125 lap events here in Saskatoon. The sun has gone down, but the track is dry. And Ranger powers into the lead. The field right around the yellow line on the inside of the corners where there's about an inch of water sitting down there. There's water on the inside, there's water to the outside. Keep it in the middle and you're going to be okay. Riding on board Alex LeBase, you see how close teammates, the 22 Paillet Chevrolet. Mark Antoine Cameron and the 24 Donald Teach are getting it. DJ Kennington rolling the center of the turns in that Castrol Edge 17. Right behind him, Kevin Lacroix, stuck by Brett Taylor in the 46. Brett Taylor, fourth quickest best lap in that first race, started him 
on the outside of row two for this one. You think Kennington's hungry for a win in the Castrol Edge number 17? He's not going to wait around to get to the front. He wants to make his way there in a hurry, and that car looks to be much improved from race number one. What a gaggle this is, a hornet's nest of activity. Jason Hathaway just out in front, and then there's half a dozen, well, seven drivers right there. Simone in the one, Cameron in the 22, Julia Landauer in the 28. Got a great view of the action from Dylan. It's a battle for the latter half of the top 10. Jamie Krizik up on the outside. Will he find that hole? He does get in behind the 28 of Julia Landauer. As now we bring it back up to the 36 and 24. LeBay and T to battle for sixth position. Jason Hathaway in the Kubota number three is right there too. This is a more tightly bunched train than I remember in that first 125 lapper. But I think these guys realize the leader, Amber Ranger, is setting a torrid pace and he's got the race car that he can just drive away with. They don't want to get left behind. Remember, Ranger started in 11th place in that first 125 lap race and he finished up inside the top three. So he did work his way up to the front very, very quickly. Now he has nobody in front of him. It was a masterful drive for Andrew Ranger as we ride on board with Jason Hathaway. What do we call this camera? It is robotic, so the view changes as we go. 360-degree cam, a new toy from the production team here at TSN, and it gives us some wonderful shots. When did cameras get better than our eyeballs? There's Anthony Simone way up the track. Oh, new Cocas and Simone come together as Anthony was trying to get down to the bottom of the racetrack. There you see Jason White in his 100th career start. He'll tuck in behind his CBRT teammate. Now we're on board with Simone. Let's see if we can hear any problems. You know, he might have just caught that moisture up in turn number one and then sent him for a little trip up the racetrack. Yeah, the car seems to have settled in fairly well as we have another look at the Kubota number three of Jason Hathaway out in front of Donald Teague in the 24. That is sixth and seventh. There's Kevin Lacroix and Brett Taylor in the 46, a man from Calgary, Alberta. We talk about Jason White's 100 career starts, the first Western driver to reach that mark. Brett Taylor has 22 career starts. He would be the next highest active driver with that many starts in the NASCAR Pinty Series, and he is turning up the wick. And Brett Taylor having the best night of racing of his career. He was in the hospital this morning, battling symptoms of food poisoning. Doesn't seem to be affecting him right now. Sometimes when you put that helmet on, pull the strap tight, the rest of the world just sort of fades away. You're absolutely right, as Alex Tagliani, who spun out of the fifth spot in that first event, is battling with Mark Dilley in the 64. Right behind them, the early detection is the key number zero. here this weekend. In practice, he's turning laps about eighth quickest. Didn't get the speed up in qualifying, and here in the race, he's struggling to find the pace once again. Making quite a few sparks at the bottom of that series. I just noticed that, yeah. So possibly something amiss. That could be something driving. It looks like coming from the front of the race car. We take a look at the Arona EpiPen, the number 18 Chevy of Alex Tagliani. Tagliani coming into this race weekend, third in points, and we'll give you a little bit of history. When you go into the Western Swing, drivers in the top three in points have won the championship 92% of the time. That's a staff of our stats man extraordinaire, Bryce. Is it top three or even top two? I know first or second coming out of the Western Swing, is a pretty solid indicator. Oh, look at Landauer giving the muscle to the 10 of Luke Hocus, and here comes Tagliani. He says, thank you very much. He goes to the inside. There's another spot for the driver of the Rhone EpiPen Chevy. And the trouble was, Landauer gave some bumper to Hocus, but when she had to lift for him up the track, Tagliani, I believe, gave a little bit of bumper to Landau, or just timed it right to get underneath. So her yeah. hard work netted Alex Tagliani two spots. There's the 64 of Mark Dilley. He's working up through the field. Byron Nelson from Leland, as you mentioned, and Adam. Byron bringing a large contingent 
of people to Saskatoon as he does each and every year. One of our series' great supporters over many, in fact, I believe over every year since it began. And look at this, Brett Taylor has gotten up below. Kevin Laquan made that pass for position. Hathaway trying to get through as well. Taylor up to fourth, Hathaway fighting for fifth. There are teammates there from the Team 3 Orange. Now Hathaway working underneath the bumper to bumper number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And Donald Teach picked up his first ever win in the NASCAR Pinty Series here wow. last year. He got a little crossways after contact with Kevin Lacroix, but Lacroix went to the back in a hurry. Well, a little bit of contact from Donald Teach, and it just set Lacroix off going into the corner. He never really regained stability in the car, and he is sliding backwards. We talked about the sparks on the 04 of Brandon White, but they're still there, and White... Matter of fact, up to 15th spot, so it doesn't seem to be affecting the 04 too, too much. Turning some great laps as Taylor goes around the outside of TJ Renamato in the 0 2. Jason Hathaway hot on his heels. See the front end of that wing and a dodge settle in just nicely as your leader starts to work lap traffic. The 21 of Jason White way up in the dirty groove. Up on the outside, giving the leader plenty of room. Right on board with Andrew Ranger as he continues to click off laps in race number two of the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s. Driver, the number 27, Will Part Dodge. Andrew Ranger has dominated the second race of the Velocity Prairie Thunder Twin 125s here at Saskatoon. Kevin Lacroix, though, controls seventh place with Alex LeBay in tow. And you know what? The action has been intense because there's been traffic all night. They're battling deeper in the field. There's been a lot of racing for the fans to watch here this evening. But out in front, look at how clean that 27 of Andrew Ranger is. He drove through the field from outside the top 10 in that first race without hardly putting a mark on that Mopar 27. Now, after practice, the team was very excited about the handling of this race car. And then he went out and qualifying and sort of laid an egg. I mean, qualified way back in 11th, which when you're practicing in the top two, you would think you'd be a little bit higher up, but it didn't get, they didn't get discouraged. Matter of fact, they just put their heads down and went to work. He's a gifted race car driver. I mean, we've, we've got a number of quality race car drivers in our series. This is Alex Tagliani. That action was in the corner of the screen as we're under yellow Bravo for TJ Rinomato, and that might have been a mistake. Rinomato let off the brake and let the car roll backwards. That grass is absolutely saturated. Obviously, these general tires are slicks, no treads. You get into a wet grass. And unfortunately for TJ Renamato, all he can do is spin the back tires. Let's have another look at what happened from our speed shot. Wow, that was a close one for LP Doomblin. Let's have a look from his onboard. And look at this, Renamato spins to the outside, but he wound up in the grass on the inside. And Dave, this is a bit of a teachable moment for a rookie driver. Lock down the brakes to bring your car to a stop. LP Doomblin was lucky to get through that. 36 of Alex LeBay taking the opportunity to head down pit lane. The crew says they're going to work with some spring rubbers. There you see them coming out of the right rear corner on the Hotel Le Concorde Ford Fusion. Wow, looks like they took out a couple of spring rubbers or a couple of pieces of something on the right rear. And now they've got to race the pace car, pace truck rather, back on track, and I don't think he's going to beat it. Well, you can hear the intensity of the voices in that pit stall. They wanted the crew to work a little quicker. Andrew Ranger, under caution, is your race leader. Andrew Ranger opting for the outside line as he leads the Velocity Prairie Thunder. Twin 125s presented by Bear. His teammate, DJ Kennington, will line up to the inside. I have to believe the reason Ranger is electing the outside is so he doesn't hang out his teammate to dry. If I was a gambling man, I'd say Ranger will fire first. You'll see him right down to the bottom of the racetrack in front of Kennington before they get to turn one. The Dodge NASCAR pace truck is in. We ride on board with Jason Hathaway in fifth.
360 degree view and you can see a little bump and a little nudge that's actually a significant hit well the contact with Tej on the outside almost seems secondary because he had Kevin Lacroix to the inside and now Tej and Tagliani are battling Kennington and Ranger are battling this is the first time this race that anybody has managed to get within striking distance of the Mopar Dodge and it's DJ Kennington his teammate who will lead this lap in the 17. The advantage of having teammates, there really aren't team orders in this type of racing in terms of who would finish where, but you can orchestrate a restart to the benefit of you and your teammate. And I believe that's what we just saw there with Ranger and Kennington, and they executed it perfectly. Winner of race number one is L.B. Dumoulin. still sits in third place. Kevin Lacroix back up into fifth now as Hathaway has slid back a little bit in the Kubota Chevy. Yeah, not sure what's going on since his restart. Unless that contact with the 24 might have caught a right rear tire. Yeah, there is some smoke. You can see smoke out of the back end. That 360 camera showed us there was some contact for the three car. The only thing about these onboards, they're so amazing, but you can't show concern on the driver's face. They always look so, so cool in there. Well, he's up on the outside and he's losing pace. Todd, what's going on? Yeah, the team talking about it with NASCAR officials right now. That smoke's still coming out. They're not sure if it's the rear end. The black flag hasn't come out yet, but there is concern about the smoke pouring out of the three car. And it appears, Todd, the smoke is getting heavier from the back end, but still, this up towards the front. DJ Kennington, still your leader, about five car lengths now ahead of the 27. His teammate, Andrew Ranger, LP Dumoulin, Brett Taylor now starting to work over the back end of Dumoulin. I'm amazed at how hard Taylor is able to drive into the corner and stick that front end. Watch this. Aha! <laughs> Next time we'll watch that as we ride on board with Dumoulin. Going down into turn three. See Taylor right back up on the bumper of LP Dumoulin in the 47. And I'll tell you, if that is a rear end letting go on Hathaway, starter Dan Hawkins will be the first to know because it is a smell like nothing else you will smell at a racetrack. Absolutely. You can really tell when a rear end starts going bad. But looking back a little bit further is the 22 and the 64. That's Mark Antoine Cameron and Mark Dilley battle for seventh spot. Mark Dilley has 500 guests cheering him on tonight. We've mentioned Byron Nelson from Leland. But that's who brings this party to the racetrack. Reno Montaneri, the crew chief, is Kevin Lacroix. Gets a bit of a nudge from Donald Teach. Teach drives to the inside in this battle for fifth. Now, you mentioned Reno Montaneri. Everybody at Mixed Motorsports, the smiles are back on their faces. They're having a ton of fun again, and it's great to see them at the track. Let's have another look at this pass. Yep. Wow. That'll do it. Little bump and run for Donald Teach. And this back up at the front is Andrew Ranger. Has tucked his head and he is making a run for the top spot. And dives to the inside. He'll get position on his teammate and team owner, DJ Kennington. Move the man from Roxton Pond, Quebec, into top spot once again. Andrew Ranger out in front. Kennington falls to second. They've still got a sizable gap back to third. A little bit of comfort back to LP Dumoulin in the 47, who is being hounded by Brett Taylor in the 46. Yeah, you say comfort back to them, but LP Dumoulin has no comfort. He has a hound on his back door, and that's Brett Taylor. The, the defending other. series champion with the defending, or last year's Justin's Rookie of the Year, now dicing nose to tail. And if you're LP Dumoulin, you've been on the track many, many times with Brett Taylor, but I doubt there has ever been a time when Taylor was really harassing him for a pass. So Dumoulin doesn't know what Brett Taylor's style is, and I've got to commend Brett Taylor making a little bit of contact, but nothing dirty as he makes a beautiful pass for third. Uh, into a podium position for the driver of the 46, Brett Taylor, coming off his career best sixth place in race number one here in Saskatoon. This will mark, make a new high water mark if he can hang on. 
It absolutely would. What a thrill for the driver from Calgary, Alberta, and for winging at restaurants on the quarter panels of those that race car. There's 86 laps already complete, and we are under yellow. Yellow flag flies. And this one is for the one of Anthony Simone, who is stopped in turn number three. Don't let it get into and the grass. And will he manages to get on the gas. Got it refired. He heard the engine was silent. Let's have another look at what happened this morning. That was the 28 of Julia Landauer. And she got a piece of Anthony Simone. All sorts of congestion. Action down in the three pit. Todd is there. Jason Hathaway brings the three along pit road. The crew has been instructed, get the right rear tire off, get it up in the air. Let's have a look and see if they can find the source of that smoke that has been coming from outside of that car. This is one of the closest teams on pit road. They have been together an awfully long time. They work hard together. They succeed together and sometimes struggle together. Now they look like they're still trying to find that diagnosis as we're getting ready to go green. You can see NASCAR official Jeff Wilcox looking to see what is up in the three pit. We'll be back after this with a run to the finish. DJ Kennington has been quick on the short runs. His teammate Andrew Ranger has been dandy on the long runs. And now teammates line up side by side for the second restart of the night. Wow, big start for Andrew Ranger. Wasted no time. I'll go out there even. Steven Simmons telling DJ he's got a car to his outside. Nobody wants to get hung up on that outside as LP Dumoulin is there and trying to hang on to third. Brett Taylor down low. That's the battle for third as the leaders start to mix it up. Here comes Kennington to the inside. Well, just like you said, Dave, Kennington is great on a short run. And he's showing it now. It's a great drive after clear. Half back. Clear by one. Right there. See, and there's a little bit of cheerleading that Steve Simmons gives to DJ Kennington. Just nice work. Keep going. Tuck your head and go. Steve Simmons, a great spotter. His older brother, Scott Simmons, works for Denny Hamlin's team down in North Carolina. So definitely, it is in the family. Riding on board with Andrew Ranger. Does he have something to come back? back? See, DJ Kennington couldn't see Ranger to the bottom. He needs to hear it from his spotter, whether he needs to respect that there's a car down there or whether he can run the racing line and chop directly to the bottom of the track. Take a look. The 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron, the GM Pie Chevrolet. Chevy Camaro, the 74 bumper to bumper Dodge of Kevin Lacroix battling there for sixth spot. Kevin Lacroix unable to gain that momentum that he had in race number one. Wow, Cameron ran Lacroix up the racetrack. Lacroix held his group, and it almost spit Cameron back down to the inside. What a great view. How about the run by the 64 of Mark Dilly battling there with the 18 of Alex Tagliani almost going three wide. And this is the class that Mark Dilly has. He could some bumper there and pick up a few spots. Oh, the do it. Half back to the 40. There's the communication. All clear behind the 27. Don't get hung out in that outside lane. Duck back down because Brett Taylor was ready to strike. 25 laps to go in the second 125 lap event. Brett Taylor is a factor in this battle for the lead. Mark Antoine Cameron still battling with Kevin Lacroix. And there you see Alex Tagliani, the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet just in behind this dice. He doesn't know which lane to follow, but it looks like he's pairing up with the 20 22 on Mark Antoine Cameron. Even though Cameron is Tagliani's teammate, I don't think Tagliani would even hesitate to go three wide if he felt he could pick up two spots at once. That's his ferocity compared to the more gentlemanly style of Mark Dilly in the 64. We saw a quick wiggle from the bumper to bumper dodge of Kevin McGuan. There he goes again into turn number one. That car having trouble on turn entry. It just seems like the back end really wants to step out very loose. Of all the tracks we go to, this particular racetrack, the cars are so very close in speed. When you start to have a problem like that, it really magnifies itself. We'll go to a 
a split screen, a battle for sixth on your left, a battle for second. Now, on your right is DJ Cannington as Brett Taylor in the wing and at number 46, right on his back. Brett Taylor must be thinking he has died and gone to heaven. Brett Taylor, welcome to Advanced Short Track Racing. School is in. DJ Cannington is definitely one of the teachers here in the NASCAR Pinty Series, a veteran of this series, and Brett Taylor, a hungry youngster, again, the last year's Jostens Rookie of the Year, looking for second spot in the 46, side by side with the veteran Kennington. 19 laps to go as Brett Taylor inching his way ahead. He got a little too hot into the corner, couldn't get back to the throttle. That allowed Kennington to roll back around the outside and maintain that position. Credit to Brett Taylor. He's doing this very, very cleanly. So as they almost clear, touch clear, clear, clear. in turn two. Inside, inside. Kennington, a great run on the outside, though. All night long, Brett Taylor's clear, get, clear. getting that huge drive into the corner. Taylor can get in, but Kennington can get off, and that's allowing him to hold on to second spot. But as those two battle side by side, the leader is setting sail. Deeper in the field, Alex LeMay in that 36, battling with the 64 of Mark Dilley for a spot in the top 10. Jamie Krizik just ahead there in the 34. He sits in ninth, but LeBay in the Hotel La Concorde, the silver wax Ford Fusion battling alongside the other Ford Fusion. The NTN bearings Leland 64, Mark Dilley. What a great night for Jamie Krizik in that 34, that Crown Pell Ventures car. They should be very proud of the effort he's put in tonight from Grand Prairie, Alberta. And they'll be joining the series at the next stop in Edmonton as well, which should be another good track suited to his style of racing for Jamie Krizik. Now back up towards the front, the WeatherTech.ca number four. 47 of LP Dumoulin battling there with Brett Taylor and DJ Kennington. But look at the gap that Andrew Ranger has built up at the front. The longer this run goes, the farther Andrew Ranger gets out in front. 13 laps to go, and if there's no cautions, Andrew Ranger can basically run on cruise control. We'll be coming into lap traffic here very shortly. See Jason Hathaway with the issues resolved for now in the Kubota number three. He'll stick to the outside line again. That's veteran against veteran here. So he knows the leaders are going to come through and they'll want the bottom groove. And it's exactly where Andrew Ranger is going to go. DJ Kennington has walked up the racetrack a little bit in that 17 machine. Let's see if he does in three and four. He's a couple of feet off the bottom as we've got Alex Tagliani battling with Donald Teach for the fifth spot. Just in behind there is Kevin Lacroix. Wouldn't be a race if you don't see some Something dragging from the back end of the Rona Happy Pen Chevrolet of Alex Tagliani, but he's had a tough go today. He's gone from the back up to the front. Now he's fighting for a top five spot. So really a tough day, but they get sideways contact between the 24 and the 18, and the 74 will pick up a spot. Significant contact. They both slide up the racetrack. Kevin Lacroix was Johnny on the spot to drive underneath. Taylor had to really pinch that car down as they went three wide under the three of Jason Hathaway. And look at them right behind, same story. Now, now look, two by two, and there's Hathaway who came down. T wanted to get through, and he muscled his way through. Hathaway backed right out of it, and T did end up losing that one spot to the 18 of Tagliani. We got a quick glimpse of the city of Saskatoon in the background as they drove off, too. That was nice. Look at this again. T just... Wedges his way in between Hathaway and Tagliani. And it's the mark of a veteran racer. He used up the lap car instead of using up the car he was racing with. Well, and Tagliani was doing the smart thing, trying to use the three as a pick and keep the 24 behind, but the 24 was going to have nothing of it. Four laps to go as the leader crosses the line, and this again... On board, the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin, a battle for second, third, and fourth. Dumoulin got into the back and they wing it at number 46 of Brett Taylor, but allowed him to gather it back up. Yeah, that was quite a shove. Taylor made a nice save. Three laps left. D.J. Kennington, I believe he's challenging Brett Taylor. If he runs to the bottom, Taylor could just get into him, knock him up the track. By leaving the bottom open a little bit, maybe that's what he wants. 
Fox. Maybe the car just won't stay down there, Dave. John Taylor's still going full attack. He's trying to fill that hole that DJ Kennington is opening up, looking for second spot. One play, one more time, man. Who to believe that we would have got this 125 lap we're in after the rains and the lightning we saw earlier? Down the back straightaway for the final time. The driver of the Mopar, number 27. Bring it home. Beats his teammate, DJ Kennington. <laughs> and you heard a little bit of Joe Chisholm, his spotter, giving congratulations to that guy. Crew Chief Dave White congratulating his driver, Andrew Ranger, on his second win of the season. With a big win, it's the fifth time a Dodge has visited Victory Lane here in 2019. And how about this, Dave? The entire podium, WMI chassis. That's Dave White Motorsports here in Saskatoon. Those cars performed tonight. Dave White going into business on his own and showed tonight it's paid off as Andrew Ranger climbs out. Let's go down to Todd. For the second time this season, Andrew Ranger is a winner in that number 27. Waving that checkered flag in celebration. Andrew, you said you were coming out west and thinking about the championship. Looking for more success. There had been struggles in the west in the past. Not this year. Two podiums and a victory here in Saskatoon. It's fantastic. Like you say, it's been very tough for us. Uh, like a few years, but uh, with the third position the, on the first race and the win tonight, so it's awesome. You know, I'm very happy about my team. They worked so hard. Uh, I want to thank uh, YD Mopar, all of my guys. They did an awesome job, so this is fantastic for us. Andrew Ranger with the second victory of the season. Yes, sir. <laughs> Big smiles, and now the handshakes for the team. Well, let's take a look at your auto value final results. Tagliani coming home in sixth. How about Jamie Krizik there in eighth? He did a great job. Alex LeBay and that team fighting back for a top 10. I'm still most impressed by third place. We'll hear from soon. And let's go down and chat with your second place finisher. Todd? DJ Kennington, that was some awesome driving that we got to see and a nice podium finish for you tonight to finish it up. Yeah, it was good. I mean, we, we picked up a lot. Whitey helped me a ton there in between the breaks and had some issues in that first run and uh, we just couldn't get the car good in the first 125, but it was really good there. Really good on the short run. Uh, we could get by Andrew there and, uh, and lead some laps, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Brett Taylor did a hell of a job. Uh, you know, he raced me really clean there. Castro, as usual, thank you so much for supporting me for all these years. Will Ride Transport helped me get out here with some trucks, and Brian Cathcart always helps us out, and Canadian Lennon, Arc One, all these people that give us the, the help that we need. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we'll keep digging and get back in the winner's circle soon. Got a boy, DJ Kennington with the podium finished in Saskatoon. Nice to see DJ Kennington smiling with that podium finish. Let's take a look at the points and a big jump for the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Yeah, Kevin Lacroix struggled in that second race, and it shows Andrew Ranger with an eight-point gap. LB Dumoulin third, 24 points back. Although Andrew Ranger takes the win, the talk of the night has to be the 46 of Calgary's Brett Taylor. The Calgary Wheelman jumped ship to Team 3 Orange. He raced his butt off here tonight, hard and clean, and he's rewarded with a third place finish. He's with Todd right now. Brett Taylor, Rookie of the Year last year. You said that you wanted to step up this year. Podiums were in your sights. Success tonight. Oh, man. I am so excited. This is like the most surreal feeling ever. I can't thank EHR enough, Jason Hathaway, CBRT, and all the guys that have helped me along this way. You know, uh, WMI chassis, it's super cool to put this chassis up front with his other two chassis. Um, you know, I can't thank all these boys behind me enough, winging at restaurants. It was just awesome. It's super, such a surreal feeling to be racing up front with these guys of these caliber. Brett Taylor with his first podium finish in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Ah, oh, great job, Brett. And the good folks from Bayer celebrating with Andrew Ranger down in victory lane. They are all smiles. Tonight's NASCAR on TSN telecast has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, Born to Burn, by Silver Wax, and by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a loo. Next 
next up, the always exciting quarter mile Bullring Edmonton International Raceway. Big congratulations to the entire Mopar team and our hosts here in Saskatoon. We'll see you next time for the Luxor 300 in Edmonton. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.